A lot of American cities, maybe yours, have a so-called city magazine. David Pogue tells us about one of the first and one of the best. Even if you're not a New Yorker, you may know New York Magazine. It was the original city magazine, one of the first magazines for both men and women. It's won 48 National Magazine Awards. And not long ago, it celebrated its 50th anniversary. New York was never really about the concrete of the city. It was a way of looking at the world. It was a sensibility, of a certain kind of hyper-curiosity, cynicism, and also openness and generosity to new ideas. This came out fantastically. After 15 years, Adam Moss recently stepped down as editor-in-chief. Can you give us the origin story of this magazine? Sure, uh, yeah. Once upon a time, there was a newspaper in New York called the New York Herald Tribune. It had a Sunday magazine called New York, and Clay Felker was the editor, and Milton Glaser was the art director. When the Tribune folded in 1967, Glaser and Felker bought the name New York from its owners. And in 1968, the magazine as we know it was born. I just talked to Milton. <laughs> yeah, you really should talk to Milton. He's around? Uh, he is. He's around, and he's still cogent. Wow. He's still cogent. The plan was, you know, like a movie. Let's do a magazine. And Milton Glaser Milton is Milton still also. around. This is an example of what we would do. We would look through. He's 90 of New and York very York cogent. One of, one of the great lies of American culture is the lie of retirement. That at a certain point in your life, at 65, for God's sake, <laughs> you're ready to go to Florida and stare out the window for the, the next 30 years. Where in the world did that idea come from? <laughs> You've probably seen some of the posters he's designed, or his famous I Love New York logo. I co-founded with Clay Felker. We did it together. We did it in this building. Clay was a boy from the Middle West whose nose was pressed against the windows of the rich and famous in New York. And I was a Jewish boy from the Bronx who knew how the city operated and was interested in working class and left-wing politics. But Clay and I were completely in tune when we, we came to ideas we wanted to express. Ideas expressed in articles by legendary writers like Tom Wolfe, Jimmy Breslin, Nora Ephron, Gloria Steinem, and Frank Rich, and through iconic covers, always stamped with Glazer's famous logo. This is probably our most famous cover, which is it's called Cosby the Women. Adam Moss took me into the archives. At the time, nobody was paying any attention to Bill Cosby, and the accusations were all isolated. And what really made the cover was this empty chair, which symbolized all the other people who hadn't yet come forward. And the cover that followed Hurricane Sandy's disastrous impact. If you recall, half of New York was blacked out. The photographer actually was able to take pictures from the helicopter, 99.9% you know, .9 of which were unusable. I think he had oh. three usable frames oh my gosh. Um, because of the movement of the helicopter. In an age when dozens of venerable magazines have gone to the great newsstand in the sky, it's impressive that New York is still in print. One key reason? Adam Moss started publishing the magazine on the internet early. I was leading the charge, I guess. Today, there are five spin-off websites with a total of 50 million readers a month. Intelligencer, The Cut, Vulture, Grub Street, and The Strategist. I myself write tech reviews for The Strategist. I feel like they're each sort of could be a standalone website that's under the umbrella of New York Magazine. Allison P. Davis writes for both the printed magazine and The Cut. Is there any less glamour to writing for a digital-only enterprise than for a print one? I think we've worked really hard to make our digital brands just as prestigious and thoughtful and sharp as our print magazine's legacy has been, and so I think to our readers there's really no difference. And your official title is? Editor-in-Chief, New York Magazine. Wow. Yeah. Do you ever <laughs> think you would hear yourself saying that? No, I didn't, actually. <laughs> After serving as an editor for 12 years, David Haskell has just become the magazine's new editor-in-chief. As 
nervous making as it is to step into the job, I feel like I understand what this place is about. Even with its web success, New York Magazine has had to make some tough choices. In 2014, it went from weekly publication to every other weekly. Earlier this year, the company laid off 5% of its staff. And as of late last year, once you've read a few articles for free, you're asked to pay $5 a month for access to its website. I don't think we're ever going to be your first read of the day, but I think we'll be, I hope we'll be your favorite. It's good now, I think. I, I enjoy it. New York Magazine is certainly one of Milton Glaser's favorites. Well, it was a wonderful time for me. Uh, and could you have ever imagine that 51 years later it would still be? No, no I, I had to, you have no idea. Well, you came up with some good ideas that lasted. Occasionally, yeah, <laughs> we did a couple of nice things. <laughs>